Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so we've learned how to use the input function to accept in data from the user, right? And we've learned how to use the end function and the float function to convert that input to integers and float, floating point values. All right, so let's combine, okay, or let's put together our, our knowledge of what we've learned so far to create some kind of a mini program that is simply going to ask the user to enter your name and to how old they are and how much they make. Um, every year or every hour. Let's let's keep it to every year, right? All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the input function to display to the user or tell the user to please enter your name. All right. So please enter your name. And then we know the input function is going to display this message to the user, and it's going to allow the user to type in, uh, you know, a value. It's going to wait for the user to type in a value and then hit enter. Um, hit enter. When the user hit enter, the input function is going to take whatever the user has typed and return it back to us and send it back to us as a string. Right. So when it's returning it back to us, we need a place to store it. And so I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it user name. Okay. So username is going to store whatever the input function is returning back to us as a string. Now, when you think about the name, right, we need it as a string. We don't need it as an, you know, any other data type. We need it as a string. We just want to display the name. So a string is perfect for us. So we don't have to convert it to any other data type. So we're fine. So the next thing we, I want to do, ask, ask the user is basically their age, right? So I'm going to use the same, use the same idea of the input function with the input function and say, I'm going to call the input function. And I'm going to pass into the input function as an argument over here. The label I want to display. I'm going to say, please enter. Sorry. Enter your H, right? That last track there. All right. All right. So again, the input function is going to display this string to the user. It's going to allow the user to type in their H, right? And it's going to the input function is going to return whatever the user has typed back to us as a string. Even if the user types in a number for their age, right? The user is probably going to type in a number over here. But the input function always returns whatever the user has typed as a string. So first of all, because I know it's returning a string, I am going to create a variable to store a string first. I'm going to call that variable user input string. And user input string is going to store whatever the input function is returning to us as a string, even if the user types in a number. That number is going to be stored here as a string initially. But because I want that age as a number, right, I don't necessarily have to because in this program I only, I'm only displaying it. But if I want to, let's say, perform math on that age later on, I can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and convert the string, the age which is stored here as a string, to an int, right, to an int because we're dealing with age here. 2, 5, 7, 8, you know, 8. eight we're dealing with int here, int integers here. So I'm going to store it as an int. So before I do that, I need to make sure I convert what the age that's stored here as a string to an int. And I can do that with the int function. We've seen that, right? So I'm calling the int function over here. I'm passing into this int function. I'm passing into, an, into it as an argument the user input string, the content of user input string. So int is taking this argument, so this extra information here, this argument, what's called an argument. We'll talk more about functions, so don't worry. Int is going to take this user input string, the age that's stored as a string, and then convert that value into a, an int. And when it's done, it's going to return it to us. It's going to say, okay, I'm done converting the string you gave me to an int. So here you go. And so when it's giving it back to us, when it's, when it's returning it back to us, we need a place to store it. And so I'm going to create a variable and call it user age. And user age is going to store whatever the input function returned to us as a string initially here, right? It's going to the int function is going to convert that to an int and return it back. And user age is going to receive that value that the int function is returning. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to ask the user is how much they make every year, right? So, again, the same idea. Input function is going to prompt a message and say, please enter how much you make yearly. Right, so the input function, as we know, is going to display this message to the user, allow the user to type in a value, and whatever the user types is going to return back to us as a string, even if the user types in a floating point value here, a decimal here, right? 
what they make yearly could be let's say a thousand point fifty a thousand dollars and fifty cents or a thousand pounds and fifty pence I believe or let's say a thousand CDs which is w what we spend in Ghana and 50 pesos which is you know fractions of a, of a city or whatever your denomination is and its fraction is right fraction is so it could be a decimal it could be a floating point so but the, but initially the input function is going to return whatever it is it types even if even if it's a floating point it's going to return it as a string and so we need a place to store it right so I'm going to store it back in user input string it doesn't matter I can reuse it so over here, I stored the user's age over here as a string initially, and I used the content of that. I used the age that was stored here as a string. I converted it to an integer, and I stored the result of that in user age. So I'm done using user input string. I can go ahead over here and then replace the value of user input string. Remember we talked about variable reassignment? We can change the value of, an, of a variable, okay, if we don't need it anymore. We can change it. And so over here, I'm replacing the content of user input string with a new you know new value and that new value is basically how much they they make every year they're going to type in a number of a floating point value but it's going to be returned initially as a string but we really want this value okay as a float because is assuming we wanted to let's say perform some math calculations with it we need to have it as a real floating point value in order to work with it so i'm going to call the float function and we know the float function is going to take in an argument. It's going to take in some extra information, an argument, what's called an argument. So I'm going to also pass that argument to it. The process of giving that the function a function and um, extra information is, you know, we, we say that you are passing that information or you're passing that argument. That, that extra information is called an argument. So we'll talk more about functions again, so don't worry. I am passing in the argument user input string. And the float function is going to take whatever is stored in user input string and then convert it to a float. Okay, it's going to take the string that was stored in user input string and convert it to a float. And when it's done, it's going to return it back to us. It's going to say, okay, hey, I'm done converting the string you gave to me as, or oh, I'm done converting, yeah, I'm done converting the string you gave to me to a float. So here you go. And so when it's giving it back to us, when it's returning it back to us, we need a place to store it. And so I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it user yearly wage and user yearly wage is going to receive whatever the float function is returning back to us all right so now we have our values all we have to do is use our print function to display them and we know that when you're passing multiple arguments into the print function separated by commas by default those separate arguments are displayed to us with a space separate in them so i'll show you an example uh, we talked about this in a, in a video in a past video but um, we'll see it here too. All right, so I'm going to say, I'm just going to say that this person aged this number makes this, this much a year, right? So I'll say that username is going to be the first argument I want to display. Aged was just going to be a string, so I'm going to say aged, right? And the next argument is going to be, right? So this is my first argument. I'm separating this with a comma here. This is my second argument, and I'm separating it with the comma. So use just username aged user age. All right, that's the age. That's my third argument. All right, and then I'm going to have another string makes. All right, and then in my last my sorry not my last my my other argument is going to be user yearly wage. And I have, I'm going to have another string yearly okay so by default when you pass in well well <laughs> well maybe not by default but when you pass in argument into the print function this way multiple arguments into the print function separated with commas they are displayed with a space separate in them so this is going to read as username whatever is stored in username space aged space user age whatever is stored in user age space makes space whatever is stored in user yearly wage space yearly let's put a period here right and let's run this so run please enter your name i'm going to enter kakra hit enter please enter your age i'm going to enter 27 and hit enter please enter how much you make yearly i'm going to type in let's say i don't know i don't know let's say just just for fun i'm just going to enter three thousand dollars right 
and then hit enter. And now it says Kakra age 27 makes $3,000 yearly, right? Well, we don't have the dollar sign in front of it. We don't have commas or, you know, it doesn't look like a real monetary value because, you know, we haven't learned about how to really format a number to make it look like a real um, um, currency value. But we will, we will. We'll talk about it in, a fu in future videos, how to do that. But for now, let's just keep it this way. And um, this is just to test our knowledge on how to convert values from the inputs function to numbers or keep it as strings and then, and then use them in, in your program, right? So we've seen how to use them, right? All right, so if you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time with the next program. All right then, bye-bye.